As a plus size woman, often navigating a world filled with unattainable beauty standards, Lizzo became a beacon of empowerment for women like me. A musical muse that lit a fire within the hearts of plus size people, telling us to embrace our bodies and to stand tall in the face of societal judgment. Her music wasn't just a catchy beat. It was a revolutionary anthem for people like me who had been made to feel more than less than down to our size. I remember the first time I heard the song Truth Hurts. It was almost as if the universe had created a song just for me. Validating my experiences and reminding me that my worth is so much more than the label on the inside of my jeans. The chorus became my mantra, reminding myself that I was 100% that bitch unapologetic and badass in my own skin and it wasn't just the lyrics that resonated it was lizzo herself she exuded confidence and authenticity breaking down barriers with her radiant smile fierce style and infectious self-assuredness she wasn't just a musician, she was a force of nature. Smashing the mold and showing everyone around the world that beauty comes in various different shapes, shades, and sizes. Lizzo's visibility in mainstream media was a game changer. She graced magazine covers, strutted confidently on red carpets, and unapologetically rocked outfits that defied traditional norms. She was unafraid to show her body, to flaunt her curves, and demand respect on her terms. In a world that often perpetuated the toxic myth that beauty equaled a certain body type, Lizzo stood as a living, breathing counter argument. She dismantled the internalized fat phobia that had held me back for so long. Through her unapologetic presence and her candid discussions about body positivity, she shattered the shame that we all felt. She taught us that our body was beautiful and that it deserved love, respect, and celebration. She taught us that the journey to self-acceptance wasn't just conforming to society's expectations, but about embracing our uniqueness and loving every inch of our bodies. Lizzo wasn't just an artist, she was a mentor. A guiding light to plus size women like me who had been fed this narrative that our bodies were somehow inadequate. Her music encouraged us to dance with joy and to live boldly and to simply defy the limits imposed on us by a weight-obsessed culture. Lizzo challenged the status quo. So imagine my surprise when Lizzo was accused of weight-shaming, racism, a hostile work environment, and sexual harassment. The accusers are three former employees who were ex-dancers of Lizzo. Now, if you aren't aware, Lizzo's dancers tend to be within the plus size bracket and Lizzo's dancers aren't just background performers. They're an essential part of her message of body positivity, empowerment, and inclusivity. With each choreographed move, they embody the celebration of diverse bodies that can dance. And damn fucking good if we can train them in the art. As they move alongside Lizzo, their vibrant energy and undeniable talent not only complement her music but also amplify her message. Lizzo's dancers serve as role models for aspiring dancers of all sizes, demonstrating that the world of dance can be welcoming, supportive and inclusive. That was the environment that Lizzo perpetuated to the masses, that regardless of society's standards, she created a space that was welcoming and inclusive. Welcoming and inclusive. Well, we would soon find out that the welcoming and inclusive environment that Lizzo had been presenting to the masses might not have always been the case. On the 1st of August, 2023, three of Lizzo's former dancers would come forward with their allegations and not just posting it on the internet, they also requested a jury trial by presenting a lawsuit. And when this went public, it 
was crazy. The lawsuit details pressure to do whatever Lizzo said at all times, so much so that it led one of the ex-dancers to eat a banana out of the cuda cat of a sex worker. Another plaintiff who alleges being shamed over her weight gain and another plaintiff who claims to have soiled themselves in a rehearsal because they were too afraid to leave. Because they believed that if they left and went to the toilet, that they could risk potentially losing their job. Adding to the toxic work environment that all of the plaintiffs are alleging took place. Not exactly the welcoming and inclusive environments that we heard of. Now, when first reading about Lizzo's lawsuit and the allegations that have been put forward by the ex-dancers, I found that extremely hard to believe because it completely goes against what Lizzo's branding is. Lizzo's branding as a plus-size woman has been expertly curated in a way to hit a direct niche. A niche of fans who are underrepresented in society. So my questions were, was Lizzo's branding that was expertly marketed to us a lie? And was Lizzo the unproblematic queen that we had been so used to seeing for so long? Or was it that her problematic behavior for so long has fallen under the radar? We will discuss all of this and more in today's video, the plus size problem with Lizzo. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh. Beefy, I'm working, baby. You want to cuddle? Come on now. Why are you breathing so heavily? Is that it? You just wanted to cuddle? Hi guys, what is up? What is good? What is Gucci? It is your girl Paige Christy here and I am back yet again with another video. As you guys can see, I'm in a completely different environment. I'm currently in Dallas, Texas alongside my good friends, Nick Snyder, Dustin Daly, as well as Jen Gerard. Um, I just wanted to let you guys know what the hell's been happening whilst I've been gone and I'm gonna keep it really, really brief. But if you've been following me on social media like Twitch, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and all of those kind of places, you'll probably know but my brother has been diagnosed with like a terminal illness and it's just completely warped my brain so i haven't really been in the best mindset to make videos um so over the next couple of days just giving you guys a heads up you guys are probably going to be seeing a little bit more of me than usual because a girl i have to catch up right <laughs> like the rent is due and we need to make it. So <laughs> with that being said, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you, everyone who's been supporting me throughout this time for, you know, still watching the videos, clicking, engaging, even through a period when I haven't really been as focused as I'd like to be. So I just want to say a massive thank you. Um, I will keep you guys updated as to what happens with my brother. Um, if you want to find out more about his um, aortic dissection and all of that kind of stuff, um, you guys can follow me on social media yeah, I will leave them in the description box down below. But without further ado, let's get into the Lizzo story because, girl, this has been a long one. The research on this alone has been long. <laughs> In the heart of Detroit on April 27th, 1988, a superstar was born, Lizzo. A name that has become synonymous with empowerment, self-love and unapologetic authenticity. Lizzo, born Melissa Vivian Jefferson, is a force to be reckoned with within the music industry. Her journey from a small apartment in Houston to becoming a global sensation is one of empowerment, resilience and breaking barriers. Lizzo's musical journey began in a humble apartment in Houston, Texas. Growing up in a family with a deep appreciation for music, Lizzo was exposed to a variety of genres, which laid the foundation for her electric music style. However, her path wasn't always easy as finding financial struggles and personal challenges tested her determination. 
A young Melissa discovered her love for the flute and for performing. Lizzo's path to success was marked by auditions, rejections, and the courage to embrace her unique identity. She moved to Minneapolis where she joined the hip hop group, The Choice, and started gaining a local recognition for her vibrant stage presence and undeniable talent. Her passion for self-expression and individuality began to shine through her music and her performances. However, Lizzo's break would actually come with her solo career. Her debut album, Lizzo Bangers, showcased her fierce personality, witty lyrics, and her fusion of hip hop, R&B, and pop influences. However, it was her third studio album, Cause I Love You in 2019, that catapulted her to international stardom. The album's hit single, Truth Hurts, became an anthem for self-love and empowerment and resonated with millions worldwide. Before becoming the poster child of body positivity, Lizzo's formative years were full of bullying and fat phobia. But with her father's help, she had his support to become the musical sensation she is today. She speaks openly about throwing herself into music so that she didn't have to focus on the bullying that she was experiencing. However, one fateful evening, just as Lizzo's career was about to take off, she received a devastating phone call. Her father had passed away. Shortly after her father's death, Lizzo would continue her pursuit of global success in music. After her debut album, Lizzo Banger in 2013, Lizzo would go on to release two more albums, Big Girl, Small World in 2015, and her first major label EP, Coconut Oil, that was released in 2016. This was the era that I found Lizzo. The first Lizzo song that I ever fell in love with was a song called Excuse Me. It was a song about body positivity and acceptance that really resonated with me. And at the time, this was like further amplified by the fact that in the music video, Lizzo would showcase a bunch of plus size pioneers, individuals like Gabby Fresh, who those of us within the plus size community will know as one of the biggest plus size fashion bloggers. Gabby Fresh amongst a plethora of other plus size pioneers were seen as like muses and like a renaissance inspired scene. It was amazing and they were beautiful. And then most of all, these women look just like me. Young black fat women or just fat women in general finally had somebody in mainstream media that we could look up to. And her team, they knew this. However, Lizzo's breakout moment wouldn't happen until 2019 with her single, Truth Hurts. You know the one, you know what? I was about to do a joke, but I think that Deaf Noodles tells it better. I just took a DNA test, I'm that bitch, even when I'm crying for See, I got boy problems. <laughs> that line, 100% that B, became a global mantra and a breakup song for individuals who needed uplifting and empowering through one of possibly the worst times that a human can face. This was the kind of commercial success that Lizzo had never known before. And before you know it, Lizzo was doing multiple interviews with multiple publications, talking about herself, her message, and the importance of self-acceptance. It seems as if all of what Lizzo's father had imagined for Lizzo had become his prophecy. Lizzo was his living legacy. But as we all know, especially by now on social media, the person it is that we see on the camera is never usually the same person it is that we see behind the scenes. Musicians, actors, and even influencers, all are individuals who wear many masks. Obviously, as we know, on August the 1st, 2023, Lizzo's ex-dancers put together an extensive lawsuit that accused Lizzo of so many heinous acts. However, this wasn't the first time that Lizzo had been exposed in such a way, leading me to believe that Lizzo's online and public persona is part of the rising phenomena known as celebrity persona marketing. 
At first glance, celebrity personas seem to reflect genuine personalities and lifestyles. These carefully constructed images resonate deeply with the audience, creating a sense of familiarity and connection. Yet beneath this facade, marketing teams work tirelessly to fabricate an image that aligns with the desired brand image or product. Behind every celebrity's image is a team of professionals who are adept at shaping the public perception. Image consultants, stylish public relations teams all of them they all meticulously craft every appearance from red carpets to interviews to even just what they post on social media these efforts are not solely aimed at reflecting the celebrity's personality but they are driven by the commercial interests of the brands that they endorse and Lizzo is no different. However, there have been moments where Lizzo has been given autonomy over her own social media, where we begin to see where the true persona lies and her masterfully marketed image was tainted. However, her team did a great job of clearing it up, usually with lawsuits and settlements for undisclosed amounts. So let's take a quick look into Lizzo's past controversies and how if you've been following Lizzo for as long as I have, this lawsuit and its allegations won't feel uh, nearly as crazy or as wild as it once appeared. So in September 2019, there was this whole situation that took place with Lizzo, where Lizzo essentially doxed a Postmates driver. So just to give you the TLDR of how this all went down, Lizzo posted about not being able to receive her Postmates order and that her Postmates driver had stolen it. In the process, she posted to social media a screenshot of the lady's face in question, as well as their full name. Now, Lizzo's story was that her Postmates got stolen. However, the driver indicates that Lizzo had chosen to use a completely different name in order to order her Postmates. And where she was staying at was a massive apartment complex building of which she had no access to. So she asked the person at the main desk if they knew who this random person's name was. And they said nobody by that name was staying there. Postmates driver had attempted to call Lizzo on several occasions occasions and also stayed approximately 15 to 20 minutes waiting at the location for Lizzo to come downstairs and collect their order. Obviously none of that happened so the Postmates delivery driver was forced to move on. This was corroborated by the company Postmates themselves who actually said that the Postmates driver had gone above and beyond their duty of how long they were supposed to stay for a person to come down and collect their meal. After being put on blast publicly directly from Postmates who aligned their views with their driver, Lizzo apologized for the incident three days later. However, the young lady who was doxxed publicly on social media by a huge celebrity was also finding it extremely difficult to make ends meet as her personal information being out there meant that she received a lot of hate. She had to stop all of her delivery service jobs it was that she had. So what ended up happening was the young lady decided that she was going to sue Lizzo for $75,000 for her loss of income and rightly so. However, this lawsuit would fall through and would be dismissed by the plaintiff who had found it very difficult to keep financing this lawsuit as Lizzo's lawyers allegedly attempted to make this lawsuit go on for as long as possible. Meaning not only did she get docs, but she also didn't get any money for the loss of income. And also she was hugely inconvenienced by having to fork out so much money to even get the lawsuit ball rolling. So not a great ending and also just like makes you think that Lizzo probably isn't such a nice person like $75,000 I imagine for Lizzo is probably chump change in October 2019 Lizzo then faced another lawsuit situation where Lizzo was accused of stealing the music for her song Truth Hurts directly from them in an Instagram post Justin Rison claimed that Lizzo his brother Jeremiah 
Jesse St. John and Yves Rothman penned the tune called Healthy in April of 2017 while in Rayson's studio and that the song contained the exact same line in question which is the I just took a DNA test turns out I'm a son <laughs> We were never contacted about being credited to use the parts of Healthy, the melody, the lyrics and the chorus that appear in Truth Hurts, he wrote on Instagram. Basically, Lizzo's producers stated that they were credited on the song. However, the music composers were basically asking for 5% and had been trying to sort this out quietly for two years before eventually having to come forward publicly to explain that they had still not been compensated for their work. I just did a DNA test, turns out I'm 100% dead. Even when I'm holistic, I, I just did a DNA test. Turns out I'm a hundred plus in that bitch. The case between Lizzo and the band, which did eventually become a lawsuit, was settled outside of court in 2022 for an undisclosed amount. We start seeing a pattern with this. In October 2019, yes, that is the same month, Lizzo was also accused of plagiarizing the ad libs of the song Finally by the artist CC Peniston. You guys know the song there. Finally, you gotta love. You know that one where she goes, yeah, 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 ow. Well, it turns out that the melody is very similar to the ad libs it is that Lizzo makes on her song Juice. Take a listen. So my thing was this, hey, it sounds familiar. I love it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's never a problem when someone uses your body of work or what you may think is your body of work or um, gives you homage or says, hey, I want a sample or whatever. I think it's about, um, I think it's how things are done. And right now we're in a entertainment industry where people are kind of like, hey, we like this song and that song, we're gonna put them two together or do this song and we're gonna make a play off of, which is not a bad thing because guess what? People get, they go, they go, oh, what was the original? And sometimes they don't know because the artists just don't say. And what they don't know is if you do camaraderie with the artists and just say, hey, I just love this song, y'all could maybe do something together. This situation was also settled outside of court for, you guessed it, an undisclosed amount. In December 2019, Lizzo came under fire for flashing her thong at a basketball event. She was sitting courtside at an LA Lakers game and photos of her in this particular outfit went viral and opened up a discussion about appropriate clothing to wear at family events. In August of 2020, the hashtag Lizzo is over party started going viral when One Direction fans had found old tweets and messages it is that Lizzo had posted about One Direction member Harry Styles. They detailed it as inappropriate, offensive and even predatory. Now what amplified this outrage was in a show it is that Lizzo did, she actually called out Harry Styles onto the stage in order to perform the song Juice with her. Whilst on stage, Lizzo decided to grab Harry's butt and Harry jovially grabbed hers back. But many fans felt that this was sexualizing Harry and inappropriate in its nature. To add more fuel onto the fire, an interview it is that Lizzo had done with Kiss Breakfast. Lizzo had alluded to maybe her and Harry having slept with each other. Give us some details. Tease uh, us into what we can expect. The collab um, happened last night. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guys, I just have... I've got too many inappropriate jokes. <laughs> I, that is my, like, ideal dating scenario. Lizzo and Harry Styles together. Just keep going. I know. We collabed. His... His... And my... <laughs> And then shortly after that, a TikTok video had surfaced of Lizzo licking a lollipop suggestively whilst watching a Harry Styles video. And that's essentially what started the whole hashtag Lizzo is over party of 2020. However, this situation got majorly overlooked because many fans of Lizzo as well as Harry Styles believed that if Harry truly was uncomfortable about this, he would have stopped being friends with Lizzo, which he did not. However, the 
the One Direction family was not having it. They believed that Lizzo was being extremely inappropriate as this had not been the first time. Apparently there are numerous occasions of Lizzo being inappropriate when talking about or being around One Direction members. And shout out to Journeys and shout out to the radio station, everybody who put the show in fine ass, Louis Tomlinson. <laughs> So then in 2021, just off the heels of the hashtag Lizzo is over party, another video surfaces of Lizzo being sexually suggestive, provocative, and in some opinions, aggressive when speaking about the members of BTS, claiming that if she had the opportunity to collaborate with the members of BTS, she would not be able to get through the recording session without sleeping with every single one one of them. If I could collaborate with BCS, I mean, that sounds fun. I don't know if I can make it through the studio session without having sex with all of them. Okay, so on the theme of sexual harassment in September 2021, there was an article that was written with the title, Lizzo is accused of low-key sexually harassing Chris Evans. So basically the TLDR is Lizzo had been making multiple attempts to get Chris Evans's attention. The first time was in June, 2019, when Lizzo would jokingly write underneath one of his tweets for him to marry her. Okay, innocent, let's continue. In April of 2021, Lizzo had told the internet that she had drunkenly slid into his dms article states following lizzo's most recent pursuit fans were quick to call her out on the uncomfortable turn that the affair was taking some fans felt that the flirting was cute but she needs to stop in an interview with Andy Cohen, Lizzo had spoken openly and candidly about the fact that she had thought long and hard about her not suitable for work encounter fantasies with Chris Evans. She revealed what she would do alone in a green room with the actor. So here's my scenario. He's naked in the green room and he has body shots all on his chest. And I walk in and I slowly just suck them off <laughs> okay sorry next yeah. question <laughs> this one is a little bit of a reach but i thought i'd put it in there because this is like you know a long history of pissing people off on october 2021 Lizzo ended up meeting Chris Brown and described him as her most favorite person ever Chris Brown the alleged abuser I mean take that as you will There have also been other instances like Lizzo writing an erotic fanfic live about a sexual encounter with Taylor Swift. But she's, she seems like somebody I would have a, maybe six glasses of red wine with. And then we'd be like, you want pasta? You want pasta? You want spaghetti? Let's get spaghetti. And then we'll eat spaghetti and be like, we're so naughty. Like, fuck it up and I'm going to eat the whole pot. Put some like Parmesan Reggiano in there. You know, take our clothes off. That Maybe skinny dip in the pool, and then like we're in the pool together, and like there's like blue lights in the pool, and it's like lighting up her face. She looks but I feel like they burn a little. It's lighting up my face. I look beautiful. We both look at each other. There's like a moment between us, and we kind of pause, and we're like, wait. Have you tried the lilabo from Tall? That's what I'm. Us? Lilabo's my favorite, and it doesn't. Is this a thing? Her thigh grazes against mine. It's an accident. But we like it. It's Secretly, no one says anything. There's these bumps. It's so exciting. Tingles. My bed was shit. I'm sitting. Look, my bed was $300. Like, maybe we should get out. And she's like, and yeah, we should get out. Right? This is crazy. The stars are... Starlight raining down. Just a pot on bed. Yes. And her blonde tresses. I bought Liz's king bed. I know. Cooling like, in her decolletage. Like, dog. Like, I literally, oh, she said, I'm buried in hot I've never done this bodies. before, and I'm like, Surprisingly enough, I want to say what, but I'm not that that know what it is. Yeah. Do you ever have a friend that like, you get for something like that? Like, something like this. Have you ever stained a cherry red. <laughs> <laughs> I have a brown lip liner on. Like, 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 like
Mine's We're inching closer here. towards each other. We don't even realize it. It's cool. Slowly. Or Liz's, right? Nervously, okay. but excitedly, oh. she puts her hand April 22nd. on my shoulder. 24. 24. The tips of her fingers clasp around the nape of my neck. 10? 10? She pulls me in closer. Mine's the 20th. Is this okay? April 27th. She's the queen of consent. 24, 27, 10. Lauren's 21st. I say nothing. Um, May. I say bitch, say less. They ask for mine. Um, However, as we can see, since 2021, we haven't really seen much of Lizzo like acting terribly on social media. And I believe that that's because her team has done like a little bit of a cleanup. Perhaps the most insidious part of celebrity persona marketing is the betrayal of trust that it can garner fans who are drawn in by the perception of authenticity invest emotionally in the lives and preferences of their idols but then when it's revealed that a celebrity's interest was actually driven by financial gain and not really individual conviction the emotional connection is shattered leaving a sense of disappointment and betrayal the deceptive marketing of celebrity personas has a profound impact on society it perpetuates unrealistic beauty standards and fuels consumerist materialism and this manufactured aspect inspiration can have a detrimental effect on people's mental health their self-esteem as individuals strive to conform to a version of reality that is behind carefully edited instagram pictures and shitty tiktok day in the lives but what set lizzo apart was that she wasn't perpetuating an unrealistic standard of beauty or a super unattainable lifestyle she was just like us a girl who needed to grind and work hard to get where it is that she wanted to go through hard work and determination her body was a symbol of her imperfection that just like us she was imperfect and had her vices and she had her issues but also she had a voice a beacon a call for action for people who were just like her and that was her selling point her marketing as a anti-influencer however it wouldn't be until her dancers fellow plus-size women who looked just like us came forward to speak about their alleged encounters of sexual harassment weight shaming racism as well as a hostile work environment with counterclaims of religious berating that the public would see people who look like them people who look like lizzo making many of the same claims and allegations that lizzo had been facing numerous times over several years Far from the welcoming and inclusive environment we had come to expect from Lizzo. So just like everybody else, I was absolutely flabbergasted when I saw the NBC article of what Lizzo was actually accused of. In addition to the accusations of a hostile work environment and sexual harassment, the suit brings claims for religious and racial harassment. This is wild. False imprisonment? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> the hilarity of that stream on my twitch i will leave a link in the description to my twitch down below make sure you follow me to be updated of every time i post and subscribe if you would like to see that video in person also i stream two nights a week so definitely go and check me out there if you want to see more page related content however the idea that lizzo was accused of things such as weight shaming seemed out of character to many so in the legal document that miraculously found its way onto social 
social media we live for that it states that three of the ex-dancers of Lizzo had made a formal request for a trial jury with Lizzo and her company Big Girl Touring Incorporated as well as her assistant Shirlene Quigley the plaintiffs were ex-dancers Crystal Williams Ariana Davis and Noel Rodriguez here are some of the complaints complaints for damages of a hostile work environment sexual harassment that is all the plaintiffs against all of the defendants failure to prevent and or remedy the hostile work environment and sexual harassment that is all of the plaintiffs against all of the defendants religious harassment all of the plaintiffs against the defendant shirley quigley and big girl touring incorporated failure to prevent and or remedy religious harassment that is all of the plaintiffs against all of the defendants racial harassment that is williams and davis against big girl big touring incorporated disability discrimination that is davis against big girl touring incorporated and lizzo intentional interference with prospective economic advantage that is all of the plaintiffs against big girl big touring incorporated assault which is the plaintiff Rodriguez and Davis against the defendant Lizzo, as well as false imprisonment, which is the plaintiff Davis against defendant Big Girl Touring Incorporated. So here are some of the claims that have been explained from the lawsuit. Okay, so Ariana Davis was introduced to Lizzo and her company as a contestant on Lizzo's reality show for the Amazon Prime show, Watch Out for the Big Girls. Davis was required by Lizzo and Big Girls Incorporated to submit Submit a psychological examination to ensure that she was psychologically healthy enough to endure the strain of filming on the television show. Davis disclosed that she struggles with anxiety and depression, which occasionally results in binge eating. She signed a waiver of privilege of confidentiality and consent evaluation. And she states that the information that she disclosed during the evaluation may be provided to production and its representatives and slash or any other individual or entities involved with the show basically this is extremely insidious because it also means that that psychological evaluation that they were doing trustfully so that it could make sure that these people were mentally fit was also being provided potentially to production in order to make a more engaging show most likely by prodding and poking at somebody's triggers to see how they will react at the end of the day this is a reality show they are definitely not looking out for individuals emotional well-being ariana davis believes that her disclosure of her struggles of her anxiety depression and binge eating were relayed to lizzo as well as the big girls incorporated team in august 2021 after filming for lizzo's reality show began she was introduced to shirley and quigley who was one of the judges and the instructors of the show as well as the captain of lizzo's dance team quigley was not only vocal about her religious beliefs but took every opportunity to essentially preach to any and all in her presence regardless of people who protested during filming Shirley quickly took particular interest in davis regularly preached to davis about what quickly believed to be a shared christian identity so this is the further claims of religious harassment and failure to prevent that religious harassment also during filming quickly discovered that davis was a virgin and that davis's virginity became a topic of extreme importance to Quigley in the months to follow. Quigley would routinely bring up Davis's virginity in conversations with Davis. Quigley even mentioned Davis's virginity in interviews that she participated in and later posted to social media. Davis never gave Miss Quigley permission to share this private detail. This is also a part of the hostile work environment and sexual harassment, as well as the failure to prevent the hostile work environment and sexual harassment davis claims that one of the challenges a part of the reality tv show was to take a nude photo shoot and davis was particularly distressed by this challenge 
As this challenge was a part of the competition, Davis believed that poor performance or outright refusal would have resulted in Davis being sent home from the show and no longer being considered for a spot on the dance team. Davis did not want to be photographed nude, but she also dreaded the thought of not earning a spot performing on tour with Lizzo. This caused Davis extreme emotional distress. Davis broke down in tears whilst on set, struggling to choose between a once in a lifetime career opportunity and putting her body on display against her will. Ultimately, Davis was allowed to participate in the photo shoot, partially clothed in, in a nude bra and underwear. However, this experience foreshadowed the sexually charged and uncomfortable environment Lizzo's employees would be forced to endure. This is obviously according to lawsuit, not my personal perspective. For legal reasons, Lizzo, please. I don't wanna I don't wanna settle out of court for a non-disclosed amount. Well maybe I do. Maybe I do. In September 2021, the filming for the show and then davis is accompanied by williams as well as rodriguez to be a part of lizzo's tour now in april 2022 the tour began and because of this all of the women were within close proximity of each other quigley was still berating everyone talking about her christianity allegedly and making inappropriate jokes for instance she had a situation where she would allegedly pretend to do fellatio on a banana which is crazy to me because I'm like, aren't you supposed to be like this super duper Christian woman? But all of this is alleged, obviously. This is just what's been put in the lawsuit. But it also states, quickly sexual inappropriate behavior did not stop at faux fellatio. Despite her staunch beliefs in opposition to premarital sex, she had no problem showing her ma to rehab it with the dance cast, often stating things to the effect of mas is against my religion but today i had an oopsie miss quigley's sexually explicit comments were so pervasive that the entire dance team knew about her sexual fantasy of having 10 in her face in this section the lawsuit continues to detail moments and instances of quigley just being extremely either a sexually inappropriate allegedly or b shoving religion down people's throats questioning people about their religious beliefs interrogating them as well as before all of the shows everyone was supposed to get together hold hands and pray and um, whilst this was not obligatory it was made to feel as if it was disrespectful not to do so according to the lawsuit now there was also another story which i'm going to detail as the banana story and i'll let one of the girls explain what actually took place with the banana and the sex worker because it it's the most damning and it's wild take a listen i think uh, kind of some of the more disturbing allegations has to do with sort of a night of partying in uh, Amsterdam, where the allegation is that some of the dancers were pressured into, you know, touching a nude performer. Amsterdam has a red light district that, that is legal, um, but that, that, you know, the dancers were made to feel very uncomfortable and participate in ways that they were not, that they did not want to do. Did Lizzo know about this behavior that you're alleging? Well, Lizzo was um, a participant in the Lizzo is the reason that we were that I specifically was pressured to um, touch a new performer. She singled me out at the club that I didn't want to be at, but was told I couldn't really back out since I already said I was going before I knew what it really was. If you don't really participate and you know try to get in with Lizzo, it's it you you won't be booked on as many jobs. She won't like you as much. It it just you'll be ostracized later. So we went. We stayed in the corner we talked to each other the whole time we tried to ignore you know what was happening um a lot of crazy things were happening um and after a lot of explicit things went on um Lizzo kind of saw me singled me out she was kind of going around like um inviting people to touch the nude performers and um I guess it was my turn and she um you know, started a chant. She said, Ari, Ari. And then everyone kind of in the club joins in and they're like, Ari, Ari. So of course, like I had to do it because I couldn't like get out of that situation. So I briefly 
you know, touched. Okay, and there was another instance that took place where Lizzo allegedly, according to this lawsuit, attempted to threaten violence on one of the dancers. <laughs> Take a look. I told her why. I was like, I feel unsafe. I feel disrespected. And I have never experienced such treatment in, in the seven years that I've been doing this. And um, she then proceeded to prove all of those things right by balling up her fist and saying, you're so effing lucky, you're so effing lucky, basically alluding to hitting me, that she's not gonna hit me, as she's inching towards me. And then one of our fellow dance mates and her best friend comes and pulls her back from assaulting me. And then finally, one of the dancers ends up getting fired essentially whilst being fired the executives at big girl touring incorporated allegedly held her hostage for quite some time before she was allowed to leave the room we show up shortly after we're then met by security and her management team and they're like this is actually not a fitting this is an a meeting with Lizzo, an ambush meeting. And then we're told to um, get, hand over our phones. They're like, we need to confiscate your phones. Security takes them. And then she therefore comes in to later on fire Ari. And then, you know, just- In front of y'all. In front of everyone, in front of everyone. Uh, her management was there, security, herself, and the rest of the dance members were also there. What made this story even more wild is that Lizzo had been sending subtle shade towards the girls in her song, Rumors, featuring Cardi B. Had to cut some hoes loose, yeah. Indy ain't no loose lips. Now them hoes trying to sue me. Bitch, I don't give two shits. All the rumors are true, yeah. Now what's interesting is that in this song, she speaks about NDAs, no loose lips, and all this kind of stuff. As if this ironclad NDA wouldn't be completely disregarded if there were allegations or legalities or judicial proceedings that detail something that could potentially be criminal in nature. I have to also remind you that when it comes to things such as sexual harassment, things like that do fall under being a quote unquote criminal offense. So basically what I'm saying is that if something judicial is happening, an NDA can be broken and they broke their NDA. Lizzo broke their spirits, so they broke her NDA. NDA no loose lips. So, what now? On the 3rd of August, Lizzo posted the following. These last few days have been gut-wrenchingly difficult and overwhelmingly disappointing. My work ethic, morals, and respectfulness have been questioned. My character has been criticized. Usually, I choose not to respond to false allegations, but these are as unbelievable as they sound and too outrageous not to be addressed. These sensationalized stories are coming from former employees who have already publicly admitted that they were told Told their behavior on tour was inappropriate and unprofessional. As an artist, I have always been very passionate about what I do. I take my music and my performances seriously. Because at the end of the day, I want to put out the best art that represents me and my fans. With passion comes hard work and high standards. Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't being valued as an important part of the team. I'm not here to be looked at as a victim, but I also know that I am not the villain that people in the media have portrayed me to be in the last few days. I am open with my sexuality and expressing myself, but I cannot accept or allow people to use that openness to make me out to be something that I am not. There is nothing that I take more seriously than the respect that we deserve as women in the world. I know what it feels like to be body shamed on a daily basis and would absolutely never criticize or terminate an employee because of their weight. I am hurt, but I will not let the good work that I have done in the world be overshadowed by this. I want to thank everyone who has reached out in support to lift me up during this difficult time. 
The reality is, is that Lizzo is a flawed human being. However, it's hard to say that Lizzo wasn't aware of her impact in this world because we saw the whole situation take place with Lizzo and the Postmates driver and how an abuse of her power had rendered somebody unable to be able to provide for themselves. Lizzo learnt that day that whatever is done in the dark will definitely come to the light. She can't use the alibi of not being aware of the work boss relationship and her impact and power there, because also that's well documented of her abuse of power within these work related environments. And some of these situations again, settled for undisclosed amounts outside of court. Lizzo can't state that the accusations of sexual harassment is unfounded because there are just so many instances of Lizzo being sexually aggressive, not just on social media, but in interviews and in person. So with so many instances of cooperating evidence of Lizzo's behavior, it makes the other allegations that there isn't cooperating evidence for, such as weight shaming and a hostile work environment, seem less unlikely. However, a few things have happened since these allegations were put forward. Some ex-work employees of Lizzo have come forward to detail their experiences, basically stating that they too had had similar experiences of a hostile work environment with Lizzo. This is what they had to say. Lizzo's former creative director, as well as an ex-dancer came forward in support of the lawsuit, stating, I am not a part of the lawsuit, but this was very much my experience in my time there. I very very much applaud the dancer's courage to bring this to light. A filmmaker, Sophia Nahil Allison, states that they had dropped out as Lizzo's director of her documentary in 2019 after facing mistreatment from her. They stated, I was treated with such disrespect by her. I witnessed how arrogant, self-centered and unkind she is. She also elaborated on her claim, stating that she had had numerous instances of people coming forward privately, stating that they had had similar encounters with Lizzo. I think Lizzo creates an extremely toxic and hostile working environment and undermines her work, labor and authority over black and brown women in the process. She is a narcissistic bully. Oh, of course he is, babe, because he's a fucking sociopath. Because he's a narcissistic abuser. We're doing this. She is a narcissistic bully and has built her brand off of lies. I was excited to support and protect a black woman through the documentary process, but quickly learned that her image and her quote unquote message was a curated facade. Activist Ola Ojumi recounted her experiences at a Lizzo concert in 2017, where Lizzo and her team had invited a man onto stage to which this man had trampled on Ola, who was in a wheelchair prior to being invited on stage. She stated, tragic, I defended Lizzo from racism, massage noir and fat phobia in the past. I hesitated to discuss my personal experience with, with her and her team at her concert. I was trampled on by a man in my wheelchair at her show in DC in 2017. They saw it and brought him on stage with her anyway. This person also detailed that Lizzo had sent her a DM of a standard legal note in which she took no responsibility for the situation and denied that she saw the man trampling on her to get to stage stating denying that she saw a man in platform heels climb onto my legs while seated in my wheelchair her dancers pulled him off me and brought him onto stage to dance with her lizzo said that she'd meet me in dc and never followed through Beyonce, whilst on tour currently at the Renaissance World Tour, had a song called Break My Soul Queen's Version or Queen's Edit. And in that song, one of the names that she calls out as a pioneer for black women was Lizzo. And there are numerous videos that are now circulating of Beyonce refusing to say Lizzo's name in that song, the song that Beyonce created. So it seems as if she has no longer got Beyonce's co-sign. Somebody on TikTok came forward to state that Lizzo Lizzo had stolen their man, stating that he left a 10 year relationship to be with Lizzo. I first met Lizzo late 2016, 2017 ish. She and my boyfriend were co hosting a show on MTV called Wonderland. 
and no, she wasn't very nice. She wasn't very nice to me. I knew she didn't like me, but the people around her were nice. Like her sister seemed nice. And I kind of ignored it because I felt like, well, you know, she's already like in this celebrity scene or whatever. So she probably just feels like she has better things to do than talk to me. And I just noticed that like, even when we were just out to eat or at the beach or something, she still wasn't very nice to me. And it wasn't like a, a production thing. Like, oh, she's just really busy or whatever. She just didn't like me. She didn't say anything that was mean, but she was really like standoffish or like wouldn't talk to me. You know, like when I talked to her, it was kind of like, oh, okay, like get the fuck away from me. I don't want to talk to you. So yeah, I eventually found out that she and my boyfriend has something going on, ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and um, that was that. I left the relationship. I mean, yeah, it was, it was heartbreaking. I mean, I was with him for 10 years. I supported him through everything. And um, when he finally got a big break, he left me for Lizzo. <laughs> it was really hard for my mental health. I, I went through a really difficult period of time trying to be okay with this because it wasn't just like, oh, I broke up with my boyfriend. It was like, oh, I broke up with my boyfriend and he left me for a person who wasn't very nice to me and turned out to be like after the fact, after we broke up, she became a Grammy award winning celebrity and everybody in the world loves her and her message is like love and light and positivity after knowing how she treated me but i wasn't able to i didn't want to say anything because it made me sound like a whiny little baby or something so i didn't i didn't broadcast that that was something that happened to me or i when i did talk about it i never named her because i just didn't feel like I would be supported or people would care, you know, like people loved her. So why would I, why would I try to like drag her name or whatever? So I just silently went through something really big and really hard. It was like my fight or flight response was triggered every time I heard her song on the radio or like if I went to the movies and like her song was in the trailer. It was so difficult and I cried for so long and I felt so depressed and like I was in a really bad spot for years because of how this happened and I know it wasn't her fault it wasn't her fault it was his fault it was the way he handled it she has no responsibility to me but I think they could have both been a little more kind in the way that they chose to um to get together you know like he could have broken up with me or she could have maybe suggested that he break up with me before they started something because the text messages were something that I'll never be able to not see in my head. I think I'm feeling emotional right now because this is the first time I've ever been able to freely speak on it and feel like people will hear what I'm saying and not just like come at me for saying something about somebody that they really like. And it feels like this validation. I mean, at this point, not being funny girl, that ain't on Lizzo, that's on your man the disrespect girl there was also a tiktok of an individual who was basically asked to go on to lizzo's show but declined to sign the contract because apparently the contract was extremely bad and exploitative pretty much what one of the dancers had already detailed in their lawsuit that there was some exploitative terms of the contract but not just this this individual had to send videos of themselves doing stuff you know showing how talented they are and they sent forward numerous music videos it is that they had directed and produced themselves to show Lizzo and their team and coincidentally Lizzo in the future would do music videos that were eerily similar to what this individual had produced I don't know if it's another plagiarism claim but take that as you will. This is a story I never intended to tell because I'm the biggest Lizzo fan. I worship the ground that she walked on. She made me feel like there was representation in the music industry that I was yearning for for so long. But it's been two years now and I've held this in for so long and I feel like I just want to get it off my chest with everything else coming out right now in the media. And you can take whatever I say and make your own decision on it. I'm just going to tell you the facts and my story. 
was in the casting process for Lizzo's Watch Out for the Big Girl season one. And I was in the finals. I got all the way through the stages. It was a lot. There was many steps. You had to do your dance audition videos. You had to send them your whole life story. You met with Lizzo's team. I did a whole interview with them too. And it was an amazing journey. And I was so excited when they presented me with the final agreement and they were planning my flights. Upon getting the agreement, I read through it with my family. I have some blurs on my family and they highly advise that I do not sign that agreement. It basically wanted to own you. It wanted to have your life story for eternity. It wanted to own any the rights of anything that you put out, etc., etc. And I'm an independent music artist, so I was highly advised not to sign it. We did end up giving them some red lines. And unfortunately, they gave me a call and told me that all the other girls were signing this agreement and they could not give me special treatment by applying my red lines and that they wouldn't be able to move forward with me. So it was a really, really hard call for me. I was on the floor sobbing. I thought that that was like my big break and I just ruined it by not signing that agreement. During the process of when I sent everything over to the audition team and Lizzo's team, I sent two of my music videos. One's called Better With You and one is for my song called Paint Me. And they're both original works of mine. So in this clip from my video, Better With You, I'm in a detention classroom and I turn this classroom into a disco. We're in the 1970s here, yes. We got the disco ball, I got my dancers behind me. We are doing our thing, you get the vibes here. Then Lizzo drops about damn time. We are in a classroom, this is April, 2022. Chalkboard that she turns into a disco. And of course she has a way bigger budget than me. Here she is with her dancers doing their thing with the disco ball, we're in the 70s. And of course when I saw this, I was just a little bit confused. I thought maybe it's just a coincidence, but then something else happened. So then Lizzo was dropping her new album and on her new album, there was a song called Naked. This is my body positive song, Paint Me from 2020. It's inspired by Titanic and it's about your body being a beautiful work of art, especially when it's naked. And I projected all of these paintings onto my body to show that and portray it in the video. And this video is probably one of my favorite pieces of art I have ever, ever made. So it means a lot to me. And I sent this to Lizzo's team for review. And Lizzo dropped Naked in 2022 on her new album. And when she performs it live on tour, she wears a nude bodysuit and projects paintings onto her body. Our songs also have very similar concepts and meanings. It's like they're in different fonts. And the reason I found out that she was doing this on tour was because my friend sent it to me and was like, yo, is this like paint me? And I was just like, that is so weird. So a lot of weird coincidences. So those are my two pieces of art that I put out in 2020 and 2021 that I sent to Lizzo's team to consider me for her show and to see my artistry being a body positive artist. And that is what she put out in 2022. So those are my facts and that is my story. And I'm just so glad to be able to share that now. And more recently, we have found out that there is allegedly six more dancers who are planning on coming forward and joining the lawsuit with the other three aforementioned dancers. But let's get into the good stuff. Uh, singer Grimes showed their support publicly on social media for Lizzo. So there's that. Her tweet in support of Lizzo did obviously gain some backlash and negative attention. But it seems as if Grimes has doubled down on that. And I guess that's something, so take that as you will. As well as Lizzo's current dancers, who are a part of the Big Girls and Big Boys Touring Company Incorporated, who goddamn knows, they stated, we have had the time of our lives on our special tour and we have been so honored to share the stage with such an amazing talent. Writing an extremely long Instagram post in support of Lizzo. Now, more recently, on August 23rd, Lizzo tells TMZ that she plans on suing the three aforementioned dancers who made the lawsuit against her. Lizzo's attorney says newly surfaced photos show Lizzo's accusers returned to the topless cabaret show a month later and took photos with the performer. Now, this indeed does look damning. And I guess if Lizzo is able to refute this, Lizzo is able to at least refute a part of the sexual harassment claims that have been made against her. But I do want to state that there is a difference between consent 
to do something and informed consent right knowing what you're about to get into knowing what you're about to see and knowing what you are about to experience versus not knowing and not being told and then being forcibly put in a situation where you are not comfortable are two separate things we are talking allegedly about coercive control allegedly as well as uninformed consent this was not informed consent the conversation that was being had on social media wasn't that the dancers didn't enjoy the performance it was more so that the dancers were so afraid of Lizzo that they felt that not attending was not an option and then to top that off they weren't really briefed on what it was that they were going to be attending the argument was the hostile work environment that made it feel as if declining was not an option but I digress However, just a few hours ago, Lizzo's ex-dancers have actually spoken to the media in reaction to Lizzo's attempts of counter-suing them in the future. In a new statement from their lawyer, which said, Lizzo's threat to counter-sue for malicious prosecution is an insidious attempt of intimidation and delivers a chilling effect to all the harassment victims in the workplace. So at this point, we the people have no idea what the hell is going to happen from here. I think Lizzo is a cautionary tale about the dissonance between our expectations of a celebrity and their actual behavior. This highlights the complex interplay between media consumption, marketing strategies, and parasocial relationships. We, as consumers of content, often construct an idealized image of celebrities in our mind, setting the stage for disappointment when they inevitably fall short of these unrealistic standards. This phenomenon is exasperated by the strategic efforts of the marketing machinery that tirelessly crafts and perpetuates these images to maintain engagement and profitability. Marketing strategies wield a tremendous influence in shaping our perceptions of celebrities. The carefully curated narratives, staged events, and I can't help but notice that yesterday after speaking about countersuing, Lizzo decides to randomly announce that she is producing new music. And calculated social media posts all contribute to the creation of an ideal persona that often diverges from the complexities of real human lives. When these celebrities inevitably reveal their flaws, the dissonance between the constructed image and reality is stark and the disappointment can be profound. And that's what everybody is they're disappointed in Lizzo. Lizzo's contributions to pop culture is undeniable. She has smashed records, sold out tours, and performed on some of the most prestigious stages of the world, all whilst remaining what we believe to be authentic and true to herself and her message. Her charisma and confidence have resonated with individuals of all kinds of backgrounds, making her a symbol of empowerment, self-love and authenticity. And this lawsuit has shattered that. The harm that this current lawsuit will have done to Lizzo's reputation is irreparable and the history of Lizzo's past transgressions has somehow now become the anchor that gives these allegations weight no pun intended but who should we believe well according to Lizzo all the rumors are true so we have no choice but to believe it